What is going on you guys? It's me Sam Griffin and today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do what the kids call a studio tour. That's right. You're going to learn about all of the Gadgets Gizmos products that you can go out and buy today to be just like me, just like Papa Griff. I arrange, I record, I film, and uh, they each require different little things. And there might be some things in here that uh, would surprise you uh, that are important to my great success here on YouTube.com. So the first thing I want to talk about is recently I had a significant upgrade to my desk situation, right? A company called FlexiSpot hit me up on my Gmail and said, hey, Sam, we got this cool desk. It's called the FlexiSpot E7. Do you, do you, wanna, do you want one? We'll give you one if you talk about it in a video. And I said, heck yeah, dude, it's time to cash in, baby. Uh, no, but seriously, I've, I've wanted a standing desk for a long time. I've thought about it for a while. Sitting is bad for you. Sitting is the new smoking. You can't sit, you can't smoke. Life isn't fun anymore. If I could stand up just sometimes, just throughout the day, I would love that. So they sent me this thing and baby, it's beautiful. I have it in the standing position right now, but check this out, dude. Ooh, can you believe that? I can. I can believe it because I've been using it for the past couple weeks and I freaking love it. And you operate everything from this keypad right here and it's got different settings. So you can set the height for your sitting, you can set the height for your standing, and then you just smash a button and it goes to where you want. For some reason when I'm standing, doing work, I feel like I have more energy, I'm more in the zone. When I sit down, I start to get lazy, I find myself browsing YouTube videos more. I'm not just saying that, I mean that's that's actually been my experience the last couple weeks. So at the highest setting, your desk needs to be nice and stable, okay? I have like a huge 48 inch monitor on here, I have a camera stand, speakers with big heavy stands on them, and it's all loaded on the back of the desk. And this desk is fine. I was I was actually worried, I was like, I don't know if it's gonna be stable enough. It's just got two legs. They do have one called the E7Q that has four legs and is like, like a rock. Dude, I mean, this with all the stuff I have here, it's great, I freaking love it. They also gave me some cool accessories for it. This is an under the desk drawer. Comes out like that. You know, you can put whatever you want in there. Money, garbage, snacks. They also sent me this cool, uh, this power strip, but it's white and I like the whole kind of bamboo and black stuff. I know they have a 30 day money back guarantee. It's got a 15 year warranty. Some people aren't even 15 years old, including, you know, me. If you're interested in the flexi spot, I'm gonna put a link down in the description. Now, Let's talk about mics, okay? What mics am I using to record my beautiful guitar covers? Some of the best on the net, some would say. So the first thing is, if you're using one mic to record, get out of here, get out of my face. I don't wanna talk to you, I don't wanna see you. Um, luckily, this is this is a one-way street here, a YouTube video, I can't see you. I used to use two Rode NT5s, and that's a great setup. Um, I use it in what's called an AB setup. Basically two mics, um, you know, about this width apart, pointed toward the 12th fret. You take each of those signals, pan them hard left, hard right, and uh, it sounds pretty good. Now, I also found this technique called mid-side recording. When I was looking to upgrade my mics, the way that you achieve that is one mic, you have a central mic that's kind of capturing the main center stereo image, I guess. And then you have another mic that captures the sides. And there's a ton of tutorials on YouTube if you want to try this out. It's kind of a weird setup where you like inverse the phase of something and then all of a sudden you have like complete control over how wide it is and it's not like some plug-in thing. It's actually like the, the actual width of the stereo image. Um, it's weird, but you could figure out how to do it if you want. The mics I use for that is a Warm Audio 87, WA87 for the sides set on the figure eight setting. And then for my main mic, Shep's Colette. Okay, it's pretty expensive um, and it's got a MK22 cap. Sounds good. Um, that's all going into an interface, right? I'm going into a Focusrite 18i8. I would be using the 2i2, which is like baby's first interface. It's what like people use all the time, right? When they're starting out. Something like that is great. But uh, when we record Super Guitar Bros stuff in here, we use four inputs, two mics, two pickups. This interface has 
uh, four different preamps on it. And I'm recording into my favorite DAW of all. I'm using it right now, guys. And it's called Studio One, and I love it. And I've used a lot of DAWs. I've used Digital Performer, I've used messed with Ableton, I've messed with Logic, I've messed with Reaper a little bit, and Studio One. It was like love at first sight, dude. As soon as I opened up that DAW, and I started messing around. I just feel like the workflow is really, really smooth. Um, there's not a bunch of extra bells and whistles in it. I remember Logic had a bunch of extra synths, but for recording, for what I'm doing, I freaking love this program. I, I really love it. It's like one of my favorite programs, period. Studio One rules. That'll cover recording, okay? It's not just important for your screen to be on something or your monitors, you also need to put your body on something. We call that in the industry a chair. A lot of times used is this piece of crap DX racer, which I don't like that much, okay? It's like one of these chairs. I'm over this chair, get out of my sight. So when I'm chilling, I'm using that. I'm gonna upgrade that chair. But when I'm recording, I use this. This is a rock and sock drum stool, drum th throne, if you will. And, and the nice thing about this is that uh, it's very quiet and it swivels. And it's got different uh, heights I can set it to. Um, usually when I'm, like right now I'm sitting on it. Uh, we have another one, which I put out in the hall. Just to give myself a little space, okay? Just to, whoa, whoa, whoa. I need a little space. And Steve will use that when he comes over and we record Super Guitar Bros stuff. So that's what I sit on. Now, what about my speakers, dude? You see these big speakers back here? Uh, you see that, right? Those speakers back there? Those are Yamaha HS8s. And they're on stands I found on Amazon. And these stands are called Gator Frame. Frameworks, Gator, Gator something. Put a link for everything. It, it links, technically links, not a link for everything. That wouldn't make sense, but I'll put links for all these products in the, uh, <laughs> in the description, okay? And the most important thing with speakers is that you just get some speakers. Read some reviews, get something in your price range. It's not gonna matter that much, honestly. All speakers are a little bit different. As long as you learn your speakers, um, you'll you'll learn them just by using them. Some speakers are a little more bassy, some are a little more trebly or whatever. And if you're mixing stuff uh, often, you'll, you'll learn that, you'll figure that out and you'll kind of tune to them. And then also let's talk about my sound panels, baby. Me and my boy Joel, uh, one of my best bros, uh, made these six sound panels. This was like, at this point, it's probably like seven years ago or something that we made these. Um, but they just kind of, they kind of deaden the room a little bit. If you're recording in a small room, you don't have a nice ambiance to capture that the room provides for you. If you're recording in some cathedral, that's one thing. Maybe you want the sound of that cathedral, right? But um, in here, it's not, it's not big enough to have any worthwhile sound bouncing around. In fact, just, it just makes it worse. So what you can do is you can make yourself or buy yourself some sound panels that will deaden things. Um, these are like some kind of insulation, basically wrapped in a simple wooden frame, wrapped in muslin that we got from like Michaels or something. Sound panels, very cool, very rad. You know, you're, you know you're cool when you have sound panels in your room. Okay, but I think that covers all the recording stuff. Let's talk about arranging. So a lot of my time spent in here is working on songs and I have a very specific process for it. So um, what I currently do, which uh, if you got the money for it, it's pretty great and you want maximum efficiency, it's gonna cost you probably about 1500 bucks, but I actually bought myself a MIDI guitar. So check this thing out. You've seen this in a couple of videos. It's a Godin Multiac. And it's a nylon string MIDI guitar. How cool is that? Um, if you look down here at the pickup, each string has its own little guy, its own little golden pickup boy. And that's important because as we all know, this high E string also exists here, also exists here. And it's important when I'm doing my MIDI input in Guitar Pro, right? when I do this, it doesn't give me an open E string, right? Because that would be annoying and I'd have to go in and change that. But this guitar knows which string you're playing on, which is very important. I have this this thing connected. Suction cuppy boys, dude. That's my, I'm happy, dude. I'm happy to be doing a video for you guys. Dude, I'm weird. I'm a weird guy. Um, but now, let's say I'm at my sitting desk, for example, and I'm just chilling here, right? I would be, I'm not usually kneeling. Okay. You guys ever heard of Adam Neely? I should be called it Sam Neely. <laughs> Get it? Because I'm kneeling. I, 
When you're sitting at your desk and you got your guitar, that makes sense. But what happens when you want to stand up and do yourself a little arranging? Well, guess what? You can use a strap. You have a guitar with little things on it. You might not. Um, since I do all my arranging with this, it's fine. I found this really cool strap online. It looks like a medieval torture device or something you'd find in a, uh, a, a dungeon of inappropriateness. It's called a slinger strap. Oops, guitar's broken. So what's cool about this strap, it takes the pressure that would normally be on one shoulder from a tr traditional guitar setup and instead, it puts the weight on both of your shoulders evenly. Once I figure out how to put it on, it's I always I always have a hard time actually putting it on though. Hold on. Over here. Woo boy! That's it. Strap me in. I'm ready for takeoff, baby. Woo! Now that's the way, dude. And then and then you take this, snap the heck in. Check me out, dude. I'm standing up now. Stand up guy. <laughs> um, it looks goofy as heck. <laughs> it's, very, it's very weird looking. It's not cool. I don't look or feel like a rock star. I feel like a nerd when I wear this, but that's what I actually am. I am a nerd, so, you know, very much in character. This is the MIDI output. This is a 13 pin output that goes to um, this device here, which is called an Axon AX50, which I found on eBay. I found one in California. And those are really hard to find, um, but it's got really, really solid MIDI tracking. You know, MIDI guitar was kind of a thing, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and then it kind of fell off. People don't really use MIDI guitars that much. If you're not going to get a goaded, goaded multi-ac and an Axon AX50, which is totally understandable, you can get yourself a, an MMO mouse. This is an MMO mouse. You can use any. This is a Razer Naga Trinity. Um, you can use anything with a lot of buttons, and then basically you can learn to do most of your arranging with one hand, which is what I used to do before I got this set up. It's still very, very efficient. You can still get stuff done really quickly. And the benefit of using one hand is that, you know, you can, you can finger a chord here, and then you can do all your inputs on your other hand. Very nice, very efficient. Now, when I'm doing my arranging, I probably already mentioned this, but I use Guitar Pro, dude. I used to use Sibelius. Not anymore, dude. Guitar Pro is where it's at. It's so smooth. It's so smooth and quick, and it's got the MIDI input, and it rules. I quite like Guitar Pro. How about my cameras? Okay, sometimes you gotta film video like I am right now. So my main camera, I use a Panasonic GH5. I don't know a lot about cameras. It does the job. It does a really good job. And I use a Lumix uh, Aperture 1.7 20mm pancake lens for that boy. That's what you're always seeing. In my experience, it seems like the lens is a lot more important than the camera. But the way I get different angles in shots is I actually use two cameras. I used to use one and do one take, you know. Um, I hate to break it to all of you, but the, the videos you see of me playing guitar, I'm not actually playing guitar, okay? I make a recording, I do a bunch of takes, and then I basically overdub it. I, I lip sync, I finger sync to the, to the audio. So I'm a hack, I'm an absolute hack. But that's fine, dude, this is a conveyor belt, dude. This is a business, okay? Um, we gotta keep in mind what's important. The things that are important, efficiency, maximize profits so I can get more products, so I can do more videos like this where I show you guys the products that I use. Simple as that. And this is my alternate camera right here. And this is a GH2. And this is the camera that I would, that I used to use. And it's great as well. If you want a cheaper option, it's an older camera, but it does the job just fine. Um, oh, and my streaming camera. Hello, streaming camera. So I wanted to upgrade from a webcam and it's, a, it's called a Z Camera E1. I think there was a Kickstarter for it. Yeah, Z Camera E1 with a Samyang 12 millimeter, uh, 2.0. 2.0 aperture lens. I don't know, but it looks it looks fine. It looks good enough. You know, I get a little blurry back background just a little bit. Got my cameras kind of leaning a little bit right now. I like that. Got style, baby. Now you also need lights, right? You need some lights. As you can see, I got lights around me. I currently have three on. Um, I just got these off Amazon. I, I don't know even what they are. I don't think it's worth knowing what they are. Um, I've had them for years. But they got these little, you know, soft boxes on Amazon. They're fine. They do the job and sometimes I use two, sometimes I use one. I've got this light above me that's just kind of chilling up there as a hair light. Hair light, though, you know, I tend to like people to not look at the top of my head <laughs> these last few years. Slowly marching towards death and I have the evidence for it. 
from balding, is what I'm saying. And also, when I am arranging, I use a foot pedal. And I found this thing, I think on Amazon, and it's a three button foot pedal, and I've assigned it different macros. So one of them is my make notes longer, one of them is make notes shorter, and one of them is to switch on and off my MIDI input. Because I'll be sitting there trying to figure chords out, and I don't want all that figuring out to be input into Guitar Pro. So I'll figure something out, click the button, boom, this is my chord. Bam, and Guitar Pro just slaps it in with like pretty good accuracy. Say it's about 90% accuracy. Um, but I think that's that's a whole deal. Of course I got tripods holding up these cameras, but uh, who cares about that? I have ch cheap tripods. I don't even remember what they're called. doesn't matter, just get something cheap. Uh, and my monitor, my monitor. You know, we gotta talk about my monitor, right? That's the other big thing on the desk. Now, I love this thing. I went all out and I got a 48 inch LG OLED. It's like a CX or something. Um, I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description. It's amazing. It's a TV that you can use as a monitor. It's got like super, super low latency or whatever. Okay, I think that's it, man. That's my whole studio. Hopefully you guys like that video. Hopefully you liked the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed what I, like what I do, like what I say, like the way that I am. It's very important to me that you like the way that I am. All right, go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you want. And if you don't want to, subscribe anyways, so you can hate these videos, so that you know when you got a new video that you can dislike. Okay, thanks guys. Peace out.